Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And okay, you know, whenever I say that I have a special guest, today I have a truly special guest. Why? Because we share the same last name, and this is my son, Raphael. So uh, we wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about what he's done as a homeschooler. He's now a high school graduate, and talk a little bit about what he's up to, where he is, and how he was able to use homeschooling to really, you know, if you didn't know, we're a pretty international family and, uh, you know, what it looks like and where he is and what he's up to. So first of all, Rafa, hi, I know, dude, it's nighttime where you are. I'm Right now we're in two different countries and I'm heading back. Well, actually, you're coming here to visit and then I'm going to head back to back to Spain with you, but I'm in Puerto Rico right now. And then I'm finishing up homeschool conventions and then we're all going to head back to Spain at the uh, here pretty soon in about a month from now, which is great. So, uh, all right, look at you, man. I know it's nighttime for you. You're probably heading to bed after this. But um, first of all, so you know something about Rafa. He's 19 years old and uh, speaks two languages. So he's fluent in English as well as Spanish. And he is a, an amazing. So uh, I get to brag about, about you a little bit, Rafa, which is really great. Uh, so he's an amazing piano player, just amazing. So we'll talk a little bit about the piano skills, but he's a professional dancer so when i say professional dancer that means yep he gets paid to dance so pretty cool to be 19 and have uh, have your journey go here so first of all Rafa, i know you had already had an extremely busy day so um i'm just really glad you were able to make time to do this and uh let's do this first so you know your name rafael is uh rafael ricardo de Noya. so Rafa is actually named after my dad, who was Ralph Richard Denoy, and we decided to take the American version of an Italian name and bring it back to the Italian heritage, right? But Rafa goes now by, he goes by Rafa, and everybody knows him as Rafa. Do you even remember when we first started calling you Rafa? Do I remember? Yeah, I, I, we've been calling you Rafa for so long, I don't even know if you, you know, how many... I think it was ever since the beginning. It's pretty much from the beginning. When you're at dance, do people call you Rafa or do they call you Raphael? Uh, Rafa, always Rafa. Unless someone uh, takes, takes it in a funny way and likes to call me Raffaele. Ah, no. right, Raffaele, because I got to say the E at the end. That's true. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Now, I know when I see your name in programs, when I come to watch you dance, it's always uh, Rafael Ricardo, which yeah. is really awesome. <laughs> Let's do this because we, and I'll tell a funny story about you. I don't even know if you remember this or not, but, you know, we decided to start doing homeschooling. We were in Florida at the time and you just finished third grade in public school. And we told you that we were going to have you homeschool and you cried. <laughs> you remember that you were like, oh, my friends yeah. and you aren't going to see anybody anymore. And then uh, what was it like? And, you know, you had to think all the way back. You're starting fourth grade. You're doing homeschooling for the first time. And, you know, by the end of fourth grade, we told you about going back to public school and you pretty much cried again and said, no, I don't want to go back. But what was it like when you made that, you know, think back, like all the way back when you were, you know, eight, nine years old, whenever we first did this, what was it like for you to start homeschooling? And what was it? Do you remember what that was like and what your experience was like? Yeah, I remember I finished third grade, was miserable at school, <laughs> apart from the social aspect, which was, you know, having friends and having a community. That's the part that kind of scared me, and that's why I didn't really want to leave school. But I was on board with the decision to homeschool and decided to try it out. My first year of homeschool, I was basically in fourth grade, and wow, was that an amazing year. <laughs> I got to uh, experience learning at a different pace, at my own pace. I had fun uh, learning, which was something I never really experienced before. I got to be with my mom and my dad uh, all day, every day, which was really, really, really nice. Um, you know, I felt accepted, uh, and I also felt really just at ease. There wasn't as much pressure. Um, I wasn't miserable. <laughs> so obviously when the option to go back to school then the following year was presented to me, I, there was no way I was going back because I was so happy uh, being able to learn 
in any way that I wanted to. Uh, because me, just an example, I, I have some weird ways that I like to learn, some weird systems. I'm not, I mean, not weird, just different. And that I was able to express that um, and and be happy while learning because I was doing it my own way was was incredible and I would never do it any other way uh, if I had the choice. Oh, that's good. And you know, just so you know, we weren't going to send you back. We just wanted to see what you uh, would say. So <laughs> that wasn't an option. All right. Well, you know, look, in Florida, you were dancing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you really started out as a hip hop dancer, right? And mm -hmm. oh my gosh, how many times we went to all the, uh, you know, we went to all the shows and went to the competitions and all those good things. Then uh, as you were going through and doing all the hip hop dancing and you were really doing great. And I think we had you what doing like, uh, like a couple of group classes and a private lesson each week. Was that, mm -hmm. that sound about right? Three, think, three group classes and a private lesson. Yes. Yeah. So we had you, you know, you're going a few hours a week to the dance and then in 2015, everything changed and you know, we told the family, okay, everybody gets a carry on bag, a check bag, your backpack and we're leaving and we're going to Spain. And a lot of that was so that we could get you in the world of the conservatory. So think of when we got there, you were 10 years old when we first got to, uh, when we started in Valencia, Spain. And when we first got to Valencia and you went in and you did your, uh, you you know, you did your dance audition, but they also, we all, they, we also talked talk to them about you playing music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was kind of funny because <laughs> your mom went in and they said, well, you know, you're 10 years old. And at the time you didn't read music, you played completely oh. by ear. Right. And they said, well, you know, we, you know, you're, you're three years behind. And then your mom played them a video of you playing the piano and they were like, oh, wow. They said, okay, well, we'll take you, but you've got to learn how to read three. You got to do basically three years of how to read music in one year, which you did, which was amazing which is really cool. But what was it like? So this is kind of like, cause this is like something I know people are, are really curious. Like you went from dancing three hours a week, playing the piano on your own at home. And now you're in a full conservatory where you're there all day long. You're doing dance and you're doing music. What was that transition like? Cause here we are just a couple of years later, 2015. And, and there we are in, in Valencia. What was it like for you to because now you're and I, I'm trying to remember like between the music and dance you basically were at the conservatory at six least hours 20, a day. yeah six hours a day, six hours a day. Yeah. yeah five days a week so all right so 30 hours there you go and what was it like to make that shift because now your daytime was completely full with dance and music and then you were still doing school at night what was that like for you because that was a big change mm-hmm um, so kind of just the transition from um, not practicing as much to practicing way too much <laughs> for someone. <my> <laughs> um, honestly, uh, when I started out, it wasn't all at once. Uh, it wasn't five or six hours a day. It kind of started out as one hour a day or two hours a day at the conservatory. And then in the next years, after two years, it was six hours a day. Um, but it was pretty intimidating, honestly. Um, but they were so serious at this conservatory. They were serious about all their practices that I just trusted. I trusted their process. Um, and I kind of just let myself go and didn't question anyone. Uh, I kind of just let them do whatever they wanted with me. I, I, I listened to everything they said, just kind of blindly trusted them. And looking back, that was a great choice. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. You, you think about when you we got there, right? Um, there was no hip hop. They didn't do hip hop in, in Spain, oh. still really don't. So, you know, you're now today a professional flamenco dancer. So, you know, by being at what, what was it? Because I know you, we were kind of like this, you were looking at like, well, do you do flamenco? Do you do ballet? What was it about flamenco that really got your attention that you, that was your track? Um, just, yeah, yeah. So 
I started playing piano by ear uh, on my own. So I kind of had this kind of musical, just musicality, you know, uh, integrated from that practice from before. And so flamenco is actually very musical. It has lots of percussion with your body and your feet, kind of like tap dancing, uh, where you make music with your feet. And I was super drawn by that. Uh, and because I loved music so much, I'm pretty sure that is what drew me to flamenco. Uh, and I was sold. <laughs> That's basically why I chose flamenco, because of the wow. music aspect. Yeah, and it's awesome. And, and you know, it's funny because I watched you do a performance um, that was really completely different. Uh, and I saw you do this in Madrid where you took your keyboard and you used a loop pedal to program in some music. You played the, played the piano parts and then you looped over top of it and more piano. And then you danced to that on top of that, right? And it was like, but the piano part that you played was all flamenco music, which was just amazing. So Super, super cool. And I know people at the people at your conservatory in Madrid, they were like, they've never seen anything like that before. So that was awesome. You were able to keep going. Now, we had you doing classical music, right? Now, when I say classical music, that means to me bands like Styx, Kansas, Journey, Chicago, right? But that's not your world of classical music. No. We had you do <laughs> we had you doing classical music for a long time. Made your grandma super proud because you know she, she got to have you here play Chopin and Mozart, mm -hmm. but you know, all the all those different uh genres of classical music, right? But I, I can't remember when we did this, but it was a couple years later that you started, you decided to I think I think when we first went to Madrid, it was about uh just over five years ago mm -hmm. that you started taking jazz piano. Mm -hmm. And so did you notice making the shift from classical music to jazz music? Did it really, um, did you, did you notice that it, did it help or did it add to your dancing at all? Um, I think one of the biggest things of jazz is the improvisation aspect of it. Um, something that classical music doesn't really have. It's not its strong suit. Classical music has incredible technicality with the sheet music and dynamics. Um, it's very technical and I totally respect it, but it does not have something that is impromptu, like improvisation. And that is something that jazz really introduced. Well, like that's what in, uh, sorry, <laughs> jazz introduced that to me, that improvisation. Um, and in dance, there's a lot of improvisation as well. Uh, I really think that jazz did open my mind to being more free to improvising and creating, uh, creating my own, my own material, my own choreography, my own music. And that I think also really developed my expression uh, because I'm creating my own voice when I can create, when I have the tools to improvise and create things that are my own. I'm creating a language for myself, which I can incorporate to dance and music with mm -hmm. art in general. So I think that's what jazz really did for me. And I'm really happy that I did. <laughs> that's very cool. Well, and, you know, and for people that are listening, you know, one of the things, you know, as a family, right, in going to Spain, you know, uh, in terms of cost and what it is to be able to have you be in a conservatory where you're doing 30 hours a week, you're doing music, you're doing dance, you're doing all these different things, right? We were able to spend about the same amount of money to have you do 30 hours a week that we were spending in Florida to do those three hours a week of a couple of classes and a private lesson. So the cool thing, you know, Spain is that still the arts are still considered and held with high regard. So uh, the programs are subsidized by the government, which makes it affordable for families to be able to, to have you do those things, which is really cool. But all right, so let's jump from, here we are in Valencia from 2015, 2019, made to move to Madrid. And that was all because of you, you know, why? Because you had gotten uh, accepted into the, into the conservatory in Madrid. So that conservatory is a big deal because ever since then, like I've actually flown to Mexico. Uh, I've been able to watch you perform in Mexico. I know you've performed in Brussels and uh, and all over all over Spain. And I drove several places around, and we'd all pile in the car and go. And um, but for me to be able to come and see you in Mexico, that was super cool. Um, 
so just, you know, when you think about that transition and going into the, in, in the conservatory in Madrid, tell us a little bit about that particular conservatory, because first, first of all, it was a big deal that they wanted you there and you auditioned and got in. But just tell us a little bit about, you know, the name of it, uh, kind of its background, its heritage. I know, you know, every time I go in the building, there's just pictures of these most famous dancers in all of Spain. And, you know, and they're, they've been there for, you know, 70, 80 years, right? We've even, we've even met some of the some of the dancers themselves. And that one uh, one fellow that we met is 95, you know, and he just is just renowned dancer. But what was it like? And just tell us about the Conservatory of Madrid, because it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. So the conservatory, uh, I'm pretty sure it started around 35 years ago. This specific conservatory, it's called the Royal Conservatory of Madrid. Um, it's not the Royal Ballet, it's a conservatory, which is a school. Uh, but it's, it is considered the best school in Spain, if you want to learn flamenco. Um, and this conservatory... Um, takes pride in, in, in having formed the best professionals that are that are working today um, because basically everyone has everyone that is great has crossed paths with this conservatory uh, they are they they have this youth kind of group uh, it's like a junior company where we're basically all interns but we act just as if we were a professional company so that we um, get the enough experience um, to be able to work in the professional world. How to be in theaters, how to uh, act when you're on tour, uh, how to act professional in rehearsals, rehearsals at the theaters. All of these things we have practiced with the conservatory by traveling with the conservatory. Um, and that is something that almost no other schools do. So we have um, a great uh, foundation right leaving the conservatory. There's a lot of schools that you can graduate from but don't have this amazing experience, amount of experience as we do, as you saw me in Mexico, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so this conservatory has been the reason why I, I think I am now a professional. Um, the teachers there are immaculate. Uh, the support there, the cost is very, very low. But then again, it's not a very high acceptance rate. Um, and yeah, it is all supported by the government. Uh, it is government funded, which means that the people of Spain are actually paying for my my dance education, because they do have a high regard for the arts in Spain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm very lucky to be have been able to study there. Yeah, yeah, and you gave back a lot too because I know I know how many times you were traveling where you guys were on the buses and going, and then how many times whenever I've been able to come watch you, you know, you guys perform quite a bit, and sometimes on those week long events where you guys are performing two, two or three shows a day and you know mm -hmm. over the course of six or seven days which is pretty awesome and it's another way to get back to the community for the community supporting you and uh, and the company and the arts which is which is really cool so all right so you uh, turned 19 in march you graduated from the conservatory um here in june as we just uh just wrapped up you just just completed your your training and mm -hmm. then uh there was a brand new uh, dance company, a flamenco dance company, right? I guess ballet and flamenco, that dance company that is created. And I know there was over 400 people that auditioned for this. So tell us about, uh, you know, your experience in auditioning and what it was like for you. And I mean, there's so many countless times that we've seen you perform and just, uh, we know how good you are, right? But the opportunity to go, um, there was, what, was there what, over 400 people that auditioned for this company? Mm -hmm, there was okay and then how many how many people did they accept 20 20 so you are uh out of those 400 people 20 people got accepted now not to brag but i'm going to brag anyway right uh but you know they rated you and this is interesting like for an audition that they actually give you the rating mm -hmm. of how your performance was 
And out of those 400 people that were in there, you were the top male rated uh, application or applicant to that to that program or to that company. I was. <laughs> you were. I mean, that's amazing, right? So, what, I mean, and I'm, I'm getting, there was people, would you say, you know, how old, what was kind of the age range of some of the people that were auditioning? So um, there were, was a special group uh, for younger applicants that were in between the age of 16 and 19. Uh, I obviously fall into that group. Um, and then, uh, so you're considered part of the, um, I guess, the younger group. They just kind of have you considered there as the younger group. And then everyone else uh, ranged from the ages of, 25 to 35. Wow. You outperformed yeah. all of them. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah. Happy dad over here. That's good to watch you watch you go. So, okay. So now tell us about the company, like the, the name of the company. Uh, it's brand new, which is awesome. Where you guys are going to be performing. I saw the building. It was pretty funny. The last time I'm heading to the airport and I see this building and uh, you're like, yeah, that's where I'm dancing. And I was like, I've driven by it how many times, right? I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a big deal, right? So <laughs> Um, what's the name of the group? Where do you guys perform? And with the brand new company, when is when are you going to start performing? So this the company's name is Maleta Espanol de la Comunidad de Madrid, which in English would be Madrid City Ballet. It is not a ballet, but they use the word, the term ballet as a major dance company. Even though it's we're not performing ballet, as a as a dance style, we are performing flamenco. It's still called a ballet. Um, so we, it's a flamenco company that uh, Madrid has been trying to start up and found for four or five years now, and they finally um, got the funding, and 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 they started it up, and they had the very first auditions uh, in May, and. I luckily got chosen to be to be part of the very first, um, the very first cast of dancers, uh, for the very first season of this brand new company. Uh, the company is uh, located in rehearsals are located in in a in some it's a it's a building where there's many theaters and, and rehearsal rooms called Teatros de Cana, um, which are just beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's really, really nice to 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 feel to feel big and, and feel uh, accomplished because the building is is so cared for. Because normally in the dance world, we're not appreciated very much because we're seen as uh, we're not seen we're not taken seriously in the world of uh, of work, you know. Um, and we, we were, were starting to build a show, which we will premiere in October. We have three months to create a two hour show. So we're hard at work, getting everything ready. And yeah, I'm really excited to start the season off uh, with this brand new company and see what offers will emerge from this, this company. I have a, for right now, I have a one year contract, but that can go as long for for us for five years, as long as they agree with the country. So yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Well, here you are fresh out of the conservatory. You've uh, auditioned, you've made it to your first paid company. And what's it like knowing, you know, like every day when you get up, you're going to work and your job is dancing. What's that like for you? It is a blessing. Um, I think my dream ever since I was 13 or 14 when I really fell in love with flamenco and uh, specifically flamenco. My dream was not to be famous, not to make it big, not to make a lot of money. My dream was just to make money off of something that I love, something that makes me happy, something that fulfills me. Uh, and I think being able to live off of an art, something where you can express yourself, um and truly be happy is the best <laughs> but it is my dream so right now i'm living the dream i'm getting up every day going to work uh dancing my heart out for a job 
that is uh, basically why I have done everything that I've done. Moved to Spain blindly, put all my trust in the conservatory, worked as hard as I did, all those hours. That All of that is just for this. So it is truly one of the best feelings in the world. I, I can't lie. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, when you say work hard too, because, you know, I, for people that there are people that, uh, that dance and they know the kind of work that goes into to dancing and what, what there is, but we had you working with, uh, you know, with a professional trainer, like a, a sports trainer is a, a professional soccer player that was doing circuit training with you. And he was, he was doing a lot of great work. And then this, the physical, uh, the physical workouts that they had you do at the conservatory as well. So just to give people, you know, just a, um, just an example of what that's like. And, you know, it's kind of funny because, because I, I started working with your trainer, right? So I'm like, we're, we're working out now. Right. And I was so excited when I made it that I could do a plank for a minute, you know, and I told you that I did a plank for the minute for a minute. And you kind of looked at me and you were like, Hey dad, good for you. Right. Uh -huh. But that's not your record. Like how long, like you think about the kind of shape that you're in, how long can you do a plank for? Um, gone up to four, four minutes. Four minutes. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After a minute, man, I was like done. And they had to just, I, I was like laying on the ground. They, I was back to doing the inchworm again. So it was pretty <laughs> funny. But, wow. That's amazing. So just like the physical endurance that you have to have and the, the, the working out, the dedication, eating right. You know, there's all the different things. You know, there's a lot of things really to really acknowledge you because, you know, there's a lot of things that you didn't do uh, in terms of like, you know, the kinds of the ways that you had to maintain your diet and what you did and you're working out and sticking with it. But then, of course, we decided that we wanted you to what? We wanted you to also go get some college credits. while you were still doing homeschooling. So we do enrolled you, uh, you know, at the university and you took some online classes, but you also took some CLEP exams and CLEPed out of some courses too. So I think we got what your, is your first year of college is already complete. And, you know, so that if you decide Almost. you yeah. go back. Yeah. So pretty, pretty cool on that as well. So, you know, not only were you working hard as a dancer, but we had you working hard as a young student as well. And, and you proved yourself because you got those college credits done and the club exams and I know we were studying for college algebra and everything else we were doing. So that's awesome. Well, that's good. So, um, you know, what would you say to a young person that is looking back and they have that dream that, you know, that they, that, that you had when you were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old, and here you are now, you've, fulfilled the first part of that by getting your first professional job and being part of a, a, a professional company. What would you say to somebody that is either just getting started or they've been dancing for a little while and they really are starting to take this seriously, like this could be a career track for them and that they can do what you do, which is, you know, this is your job and you're, like, as you said, express yourself in the arts. What advice do you have for young people that because sometimes you get frustrated and you want to say, oh, I can't do this anymore, you know, and you went through all that. Um, but what advice do you have for young people that this is, this is their passion as well? Hmm. I mean, one of the biggest pieces of advice, I mean, I'm sure lots of people have already said this, but just keep at it. <laughs> it's this, this journey This, this journey of anything that you want to do, be it art, whatever you want, um, is not, it's not a hundred meter spin. It's a long marathon. I need to just keep pushing little by little uh, and you will succeed. You will succeed. I do also think that having support is very important. Having people around you, anyone, friends, family, um, supporting you, um, helping you, uh, kind of keeping you on track. I think that's also very important. Um, basically, this might sound a little extreme, but if you want to achieve your dream, I would suggest that you make your dream your life, that you kind of just pour your entire life into your dream, not just the two hours that you're rehearsing in the studio, No, when, when you wake up, you need to be thinking about what you're eating, uh, how much sleep you got. That's just health-wise. And then also getting to know 
a history of, of your, your subject, of your passion, getting to know the world around you, what's, ha what's happening in the moment. I think just uh, absorbing all the information you can about, about your dream, about your passion is very important. Uh, just staying informed. I think those couple of things are very important for someone that uh, would want to get started and, 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 and achieve something great with what they do. I love that. It's not just when you're rehearsing. It is your life 24-7. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. That's great. And great advice. And, you know, it's like it kind of took me a while, like starting a business, right? Until I got that for myself. <laughs> I was way into my adult years before I got that so that you get that now and that you can share that with other young people. That's amazing. All right. Well, I know it's almost bedtime for you. So uh, and I will see you soon, which is awesome. So we're going to. Uh, yeah. Then off we go. And then I'm going to get to watch you perform with the new company. Very, very exciting. So um, for everyone listening and tuning in today, yep, this is it. This is my son, Rafael Denoya. So super excited to uh, be a part of his journey as a professional dancer and watch him grow and develop as a, as a tremendous young person now as a young adult. So can't say, uh, you know, what is it? I'm a proud papa. So that's for sure. All right, Rafa. Well, thank you. And for everyone tuning in to A Plus Parents, thanks for listening today. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.